list of the greatest songs of the 60s. Thank you, Billboard Magazine, for bringing back those memories right there. And uh, I tell you, uh, one of the things I got to do, uh, I, being a writer of rock and roll material back in college, got to go to all the concerts because I would review the concerts and, and everything. And one of the concerts I got to go to was the first ever, oh, this was what, 1969, first ever black band playing hard rock music. It was always, you know, the temptations, you know. Get ready, cause here I come. I never met a girl who make me feel the way. Or something like, Papa was a road stone. Wherever he laid his heart was at home. And where I die, all he left to was alone. But these were the first black dudes who were playing hard rockin' And that was Parliament, George Clinton, Parliament, before it became Parliament Funkadelic. They were a hard rock four-piece, just to use the terms of the modern-day world, a kick-ass rock and roll band. I mean, it was, that's all I can tell you. Opening up that show, Richie Havens. I love Richie Havens. I love Richie Havens because of the great uh, work that he did at Woodstock. I didn't go. I saw the movie. My mom and dad wouldn't let me go. I had an opportunity to go to Woodstock. In, a, in, in what uh, they now call an old hippie van. And my mom and dad wouldn't let me go. And I was like 18. And it's kind of like, come on, mom and pop. But they wouldn't let me go to Woodstock. That was 1969. Anyway, so the autumn of that year, I am uh, reviewing and, and, and interviewing after the show. So down comes Richie Havens into the locker room under the gymnasium where the uh, concert was. And uh, Mr. Havens, nice to meet you. Love your work at Woodstock. Love your music, all that kind of stuff you say and everything. Uh, okay, just a minute. Uh, would you mind if I uh, just took a moment? Sure, Mr. Havens, go right ahead. Now, you got to keep in mind, I'm like, uh, you know, 18, 19 years old at that time. So, I'm swearing to you. I'm swearing to you. Richie Havens goes to the bathroom at the sink, gets a glass, puts water in the glass. I am swearing to you. <laughs> and in front of me, takes out his teeth and puts them in the glass. And he talks to me. I'm swearing to you. He talks to me. The question I ask him, he goes, And it's kind of like, holy mackerel, this guy's speaking a form of smash and ease himself. <laughs> but he had no teeth. And that was astounding to me because that was Richie Havens. I had one of the coolest beards around. In fact, I kind of patterned this beard after Richie Havens. But Richie Havens had no teeth. Now, a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't understand. That's one of the ways, especially if you don't have any teeth and you're in a recording studio, ain't nobody looking at you, you ain't got no teeth, you can more or less, uh, you know, slide your words together a whole lot easier and thus make for possibly a better song than it would have been had you had the choppers in place that it was chopped up the delivery of the song as opposed to the slurishness of the words right there. And uh, I tell you, I, I, I feel sorry for, for the kids today. I don't see any of the artists of the modern day who are taking their teeth out in front of the kids and saying, hey, get a load of this, youngster. This is what you're going to grow up to be. And get a load of this, youngster, because this is what you're going to grow up to be, just like Big Daddy right here, because you have been digging the smash.